Okay, so welcome back. Today's weekly UI prompt was just subscribe, which is pretty vague, so it leaves it open-ended to be whatever element of subscription that you want it to be. And I'm going to do a call to action. So what do we want to do a call to action to subscribe for? Let's do coffee. I don't like coffee, but everybody else does, so it seems like a good thing to do. Let's do... Uh, get hyped. That sounds good, right? Get all hyped up on caffeine. Get hyped. I regret that. Anyways. Uh, okay, so let's do some body copy. What do we want to say? Let's make it smaller first off. We can make it say some sort of... I want it to be descriptive of what the service is and also catchy and kind of get uh, f fall in line with the the brand voice that we're trying to establish here. So we've got get hyped which is kind of fun. Um, so we want this to be fun but also descriptive. So let's say get caffeine delivered right to your doorstep every so often and we can make that kind of like a drop down of options to say like every week, every month, every two months. Um, let that be something the user can fill in. So we'll start with that. That was kind of boring, but we'll go there with that for now. Um, so then after that, we'll want to add in a button here to actually be able to click through and subscribe to something. So we will add that text, and you can't see it, so we'll make it white and center it up. And you still can't see it, so let's center align that text, get it aligned on the button, and then send it to the back because for whatever reason the text went behind it. Okay, so we've got our button, and let's go with that. We'll get it left aligned and make the button text a little smaller. And let's do what else can we do here? We'll probably want to add in a input for an email. Does that seem appropriate? Um, actually, let me think here. If we bump that down. Mm, let's add some copy here. What do we want to say? So if we add in here some sort of intro text because get caffeine delivered right to your door every so often is super to the point, but we want to introduce that a little bit. So you're going to witness my lack of spelling skills. So we're making caffeination, saying it's not a word, but it is a word. So let's look up how to spell that. And We'll do EI, caffeination, and I'm guessing that EI is appropriate here too. Okay, so we're making caffeination. Um, we're making it simpler. How do you spell that? Another example of my lack of spelling skills. Um, okay, we're making it tastier, simpler, simpler, maybe. I don't know. And more convenient. Another lack of spelling. Okay, so spell check all that caffeination. We're ignoring because it is a word. And simpler, I spelled wrong, go figure. Making caffeination tastier, simpler, and more convenient than ever. Get the caffeine delivered right to your door every so often. Okay, and then I'm actually going to... I'm going to get rid of the, t the email box because now that I think about it, we don't want to collect an email here. There's a lot more that we need to collect, so we'll, like, we'll seed the form that would come after this with the frequency, but 
we're going to need to collect like payment information, email, probably create some sort of account. So there's a lot of stuff behind here. So just an email input is not going to be sufficient. So we'll get rid of that and just make this like a call to action for the subscription. And let's bump the text over here and get those all left aligned. And let's look at look at the typography here. I want to fear a sans kick, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, and let's see. So we'll do the body copy and the ultralight. And then let's get, since get hyped is kind of like a bold statement, let's do a heavier font weight for that. Um, I'm kind of digging some of these italics, so let's do the heavier typeface and then we'll do hyped in this italic to kind of emphasize that, like, I'm going to do it again even though I regretted it. Get hyped? I still regret it. Um, okay, we'll make that a little bigger and bolder, or bigger so that it is bolder. Um, and then let's introduce this drop down here so we'll get rid of these underscores. And we will add in a drop down. So I'm going to put a box in here for the field. Oh, that's big. Okay, let's do, we'll say we're going to get it every week. Because we like coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. And let's bring in, let's make it the same size as the body copy. And we'll get a base aligned with every. Let's have to eyeball that. Okay, and then let's introduce a little arrow here so that we can make it obvious that it's a drop down. Um, Oh, I'm trying to rotate the anchor point, not the actual object. Here we go. Okay, so we'll make that black so that it is, stands out. And we'll adjust the triangle shape a little bit and make it smaller. And center that up. The input that we've got going here. Um, and then let's add in... Let's get that aligned, actually. Okay, so... Let's do, oops. Let's make this language a little bit clearer. So subscribe and get caffeine delivered right to your doorstep. So that way it really drives home the fact that you need to, need to subscribe in order to make this happen. And let's move this back over so that it's in the right spot. And let's actually introduce Let's carry through this italic a little bit. So let's we'll make the font weight a little heavier so that it stands out, but also introduce this italic to kind of carry that through and make sure that it's not only used in one spot. And we'll make the input smaller and move this arrow over. And then I guess we can make this actually look like it's part of the sentence. So if we add in a period here on the other side of the input, and let's actually let's get rid of the box itself and make this an underline so that's a little bit more subtle that it is an input and feels like it's more part of the copy. We'll bump this stuff over. Very tedious. Okay, got the corners, we'll bump that over. And then let's get the period where it should be. And then that way it feels like it's actually part of the copy here. It doesn't stand out quite so much, isn't as much of an eyesore. And let's get this font weight. Let's play with the... Eh. No, let's leave it at subscribe now. Copy is hard, people. Copy is hard. Okay, so let's make this font weight a little bit heavier. 
that it stands out on the background and is a little bit more legible. And let's look at colors here. So let's do a, I'll just say let's go with like a green here. Thinking like a Starbucks vibe. Not digging that green though. I think I want it to be a little bit more Kelly green to add a little bit of blue in here. And not quite as vibrant. So we'll make it like a, a bright green. Not too yellow, not too blue. Right in the middle. Okay. Sound like Goldilocks. Just right. Okay, do we want to introduce another color? I'm thinking about introducing a color palette, but I think... Let's stick with that for now. I don't know if we need any other colors here. So if we, we've got our headline, we've got our copy, we've got our call to action to, to subscribe now. Let's look at adding some imagery here. So I'm going to jump into Unsplash is a free stock imagery site. So I'm going to look on there for some coffee beans and see what we can find. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Oh, nope. Drag and drop did not work. And here we go. Giant. Okay, so let's get that bright sized. And how do we want to do this? I think it'd be kind of cool if we got it to just be like part of the background and not like a hard hard cut off to be like, this is content, this is image, but they like blend together. So let's do, I'm going to rotate this so that we can get it like vertically in there. And let's do clipping mask so that it is part of the container itself. And then we'll do a white fill on that. All right, but we still have that hard line. So well, let's get a gradient in here. And oh, I'm going to struggle with this. Okay. Gradient. Nope. Nope. What's going on? Nope. Oh, I think it's, oh, we've got our clipping mask in here. Okay, it, it's a clump it. clipping mask and not an object. So let's actually redo this. Let's get rid of that top layer. We'll go back to having that fill. Undo, undo, undo. And let's create a shape here. So if we do, let's grab a rectangle tool and we will do a shape that overlays the overlay. Uh huh. Inception there. Okay, now we've got our gradient. And let's do, make this a white gradient, but it transitions to transparent and we'll send it behind the content here and now we've got to make it so that it actually covers up that hard edge on the photo so we'll bump the edge over here and you'll see it kind of start to fade but that is getting not digging that okay so let's actually play with where the transition is weighted so we'll do heavier weight on the opaque side um, but that actually is too light on the right side where our beans are. Actually, I want that to be like fully transparent a little bit more. So I'm going to make this image larger. And then we will bump this over. And now we are covering up that hard edge and we get more of the beans here. So we'll bump that over and we'll tuck it up a little bit. Don't need quite that much white space on top and bottom so we'll bump this all up. That feels good. Okay so we've got our photo in there and let's see. Let's check on that gradient a little bit. I want to make that a little bit more of a um, 
not a gradual, what's the other word? Like a hard transition from opaque to transparent. And we'll just make our body copy have a shorter line length. So if we move that down, we'll bump our button down to maintain that white space, and then we'll move our input back to the appropriate spot. And there we go. There we have it. Is that right? There we go. Okay, cool. There's that. So we'll get rid of those color palette swatches that we didn't use, and let's move our overlay onto our artboard for our dribble shot. Um, okay, so we've got our artboard size for our background here. Let's make sure that that is in the right spot. And then we will add a, let's group the whole overlay here, and then we will add a drop shadow to it to give it some dimension and make it obvious that it's going to be an overlay wherever it gets used. And I think I want to do kind of like a drastic drop shadow here. I tend to lean on the subtle side for drop shadows, but I think I want to do something a little different here. So if we actually do a bigger drop shadow here. Play with the opacity a little bit more. We'll make it a little bit darker. Um, and we'll bump it down a little bit. And so it feels kind of like this. Feels like the overlay is like pretty high off of the screen with that bigger background and the larger offset. So we'll go with that. And then I'm going to add in an X here. I forgot to do that before, but that way a user can get rid of the overlay. I always hate when I get one that pops up and I can't clear it and see what I was looking at before, so we won't cause that frustration for our users. And got our X in here, but I want to make it subtle because we don't want to encourage people to click out of it, so let's group those lines and then we will adjust the size a little bit. We'll make it a little bit narrower and then a lighter gray. Oh, it's there, invisible and usable, but we don't have to... Uh, We we'll don't have to worry about that we're calling too much attention to it. Okay, so let's get these centered up and back on the artboard. And I'll bump that up a little bit since we've got that drop shadow on the bottom so it doesn't feel bottom heavy. And there we have it. That is our weekly UI for the week. And let's do it again.